We're experiencing a worldwide crisis. The World Health Organization calls it one of the biggest threats to global health that we face. It's something that scientists estimate could be killing 10 million people a year by 2050. That's more lethal than cancer is today. This crisis is antibiotic resistance, and it might surprise you who's responsible for it. Pick up the most recent text in this field. It's a new revised edition of a book just off the press entitled Antibiotics. Antibiotics are crucial to modern medicine. Just listen to this guy. The antibiotics uh, seem likely to uh, become our most important weapons against many diseases. But with every passing year, these medical weapons are becoming less effective at fighting infectious bacteria. Why? Bacteria are evolving. We have flooded the world with antibiotics, and bacteria are quickly becoming immune to everything we throw at them. It's already getting more difficult to treat infections like E. coli, pneumonia, and tuberculosis. So we have to ask. Tonight, are we seeing the end of antibiotics? So how have we managed to so massively overuse antibiotics? Doctors are prescribing more antibiotics than ever before, and in many countries they are easily available over the counter. But humans using antibiotics is not the biggest problem. The main culprit? Animal agriculture. We know that there's a very tight link between the tonnage, not milligrams as in human, but tonnage of antibiotics used in agriculture and the emergence of resistance. With thousands of animals crammed together in filthy conditions, factory farms are the perfect breeding grounds for bacteria. Chickens, pigs, and fish suffer in some of the most unhygienic conditions that farms inflict on animals. Antibiotics are used to treat sick animals, but the spread of disease is so common that many farms now put antibiotics in the animal's food or water supply. This means that entire sheds of animals are being dosed with antibiotics, whether they are sick or not. This is known in the industry as prophylactic dosing. It's legal, routine, and it's happening more and more. On the farm, most people are surprised to learn that they'll give antibiotics with, even without a prescription or limited veterinary oversight to healthy animals. Over half of the world's antibiotics are given to animals in food production systems. In some countries, it's as high as 80%. One public health research organization has calculated that globally, animals are consuming over 130,000 tons of antibiotics every year. That's more than triple the amount we use to treat humans. According to the researchers, this scale up in antibiotics, primarily as a substitute for good nutrition and hygiene in livestock production, is simply unsustainable. There is another effect of giving farm animals antibiotics. It makes them grow faster. Both of these are the same age, and uh, this one has been on a diet which included an antibody. You know, it's a difference in size, it's much larger. Scientists aren't totally sure why this happens, but one theory is that antibiotics kill gut bacteria, making animals absorb nutrients faster. This further speeds up the growth of animals that have already been genetically designed to grow meat at multiple times their natural rate, and compounds the painful, physical and neurological problems that come with accelerated growth. Not that the meat industry would tell you that. If you don't like chicken, there is something very wrong with you. Shouldn't you get some pork on your fork? The Australian chicken and pig meat industries claim that they don't use antibiotics for the main purpose of growth promotion, but there are no laws or regulations stopping them. And growth promotion will always be a side effect of antibiotic dosing, intentional or not. Either way, the meat industry is using antibiotics to maintain an intensive, unhygienic production system in which profit will always come before the well-being of animals. But okay, we've established that antibiotic use on factory farms can have terrible animal welfare implications. But what has this got to do with the global health crisis that we mentioned at the top of the video? In a word? Superbugs. 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 Whether the meat industry is using antibiotics prophylactically or doing it to make animals grow faster, the result is the same. The constant dosing kills off weaker bacteria, leaving behind those who have developed a resistance to the antibiotic. That's how you get drug-resistant bacteria, or superbugs. And these superbugs can even pass the newly developed resistance on to other bacteria, creating even more antibiotic-resistant bugs. And these bacteria aren't just infecting animals. According to the World Health Organization, 
These bacteria can be transmitted from animals to humans via direct contact between animals and humans or through the food chain and the environment. This makes superbugs a real threat to human health. Right now, 700,000 people worldwide are dying every year from drug-resistant bacteria. One example is multidrug-resistant Campylobacter, which infects over 300,000 people a year. Similar to E. coli and Salmonella, it causes diarrhea, fever, and abdominal cramps. It can spread from animals to people through food contamination, especially in undercooked chicken, often the result of feces contaminating the meat during butchering. Meanwhile, bacteria continue to evolve, and we are running out of antibiotics that can fight them. We need the effective antibiotics that we have left to treat sickness in humans. The animal agriculture industry claims to only use antibiotics that are not critical to human health. But the World Health Organization says we need to stop using any antibiotics prophylactically or for growth promotion. Otherwise, we could enter a post-antibiotic era in which common infections and minor injuries can kill. So how can we avoid an antibiotic apocalypse? First off, we need to urgently pressure our governments to regulate the use of antibiotics on farms. That means banning the use of antibiotics for growth promotion and prophylactic dosing, and putting a cap on the total amount of antibiotics that farms can use. But what about the animals at the center of this issue? Any realistic solution to this crisis needs to include a massive reduction in meat consumption. Less demand for meat, means less animals in intensive, unhygienic farming systems, and that means using far fewer antibiotics. It also means fewer animals living lives of confinement and suffering. Individuals choosing to eat more plant-based meals can make a real difference, especially in countries with meat-heavy diets, like Australia. Working together to combine these personal and political strategies we can make sure antibiotics are still around to treat future generations, improving the lives of millions of animals, human and non-human alike.